teacher on the school board. She became a regent, and now there's a school uh, named after her at UNLV. Um, that is the legacy that many local people uh, are able to build here in our community. And why, when I'm asked, you know, why regent, I think that it's a six-year term. It doesn't pay high and mighty. It's eighty dollars for four uh, for four meetings a year for six years. And I think that it's important for me to utilize this role to uplift other young people. It really is a volunteer role, right? It really is a volunteer role. I want to make sure that I'm uplifting other young people in the space across Nevada. Young professionals who want to go into, you mentioned the, the medical district, right? I have a lot of friends who are doctors, um, who are doctors, nurses, and students, a part of the Kirkaporian School of Medicine, that want to get connected to other local practicing offices here in the valley, right? My aunt is a doctor who lives in the city of Las Vegas, and right next to the city of Las Vegas, where she lives, is the Kurt Corian School of Medicine. And I asked her, Auntie, do you know the students there? And she was like, no, but I would love to be connected. Right, there is a gap. There is a whole entire gap when it comes to that. So I connected her to students, and now they're looking into working at her clinic. Like, those are actual solutions that we can connect to. That's medical. Yeah, medical students. Yeah, so students who want to get connected to actual offices, actual work, careers that you know they can start and build up. Eventually, their name will be on the door, right, or the name on the building that we pass by on the street, right? Um, so there's three parts of my plan um, that I shared with all of you: uh, affordability, accessibility, and moving our system forward, right? Affordability and making sure that we have um, a high quality education at an affordable cost. I know it from first hand because I'm a student. $300 for one book. <laughs> wow, $300 for a textbook. For one textbook. And it's the professor's textbook. Oh my goodness. Gosh. And you so can't sell amazing. back to the bookstore because there's a new version the next yeah. semester. Because there's oh. a code, right? There's yeah. a code. These are yeah. the actual issues our students are facing, right? Mm -hmm. Do our regents know that? No. Do our regions actually know that? Like that's an important thing that we need to we need to know about. Or let's say even the lowest textbook that I have, $175 for a textbook that has an expiry code that expires within that month for the semester. I can't pass it on to another student because that code is only good for that semester, right? So those are some things that I want to work on when it comes to affordability. I don't know if you all know, there's only one scholarship for the Board of Regents for undergraduate research. I don't know if you heard about it. Mm -hmm. yes. so there's, it's called the Board of Regents Undergraduate Research Scholarship. Only one student gets that scholarship. For the free uh, for, No, for the whole entire board. So I know this because one of my... What one of my Each year? Uh, each semester. Each semester. But, yeah, only one. But how many students are there who want to do research, right? Yeah. My research... Um, is focused on Asian American research. Mm. And I was like, I never got a scholarship. <laughs> I didn't know that there was a scholarship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I often wonder about the fact that there's only one scholarship for the Board of Regents for each semester for a student. Also, there's different colleges at UNLV. There's also different colleges at CSN. There's also different colleges at Nevada State College. Why are we not increasing these scholarships for students, right? Like, what's, why can't we increase that? My plan is for each college. Right. I used to work at donor relations at UNLV at the foundation. So I would know I would know that I wouldn't only be a region who says, yeah, we need more scholarships. I would actually work with the UNLV Foundation to identify the donors who already have existing funds to the university to be like, can we reallocate these funds, right? I would follow up and that would get it done. Oh, do we want any order? We just need comes to mental and health um, uh, well-being on the college campus. As a student at UNLV, I always go back to my student experience because I, you know, I'm actually living it. <laughs> I'm actually living, or I lived it, and I'm exiting uh, as I graduate. Um, I don't know if y'all know, there's a clinic at UNLV. So students can literally go to that clinic, and if they have like any health-related issues, they can seek help from a doctor or a nurse that's already there. But if you're a student who lives up in Blue Diamond and needs assistance when it comes to if you're feeling sick, but you'll have to drive all the way to the UNLV campus, that's a 35 minute drive. 
why can't we have a, I don't know, let's explore a remote campus. Is that, are those resources accessible to that student? Another thing is mentioned, like I definitely think that every single student should have the access to um, academic advising. I want to let you all know academic advising, there is a backlog right now when it comes to academic advising. They're doing great work, right? They're doing great work, but here's the thing. If you need to figure out which classes you need to pay for, and you have to wait three weeks, but school's already starting, you gotta get on that schedule. So we have to figure out, we need to figure out, and I would be a regent that would work with the university president, the college president, and then forward, right? You all see me. I'm spending my Thursday with you all, right? I've spoken to the regents. What has been your outreach plan in the past six years of your time? Crickets. So I'm here with my uh, good friend, ally, my brother community, Carl Catarada. And he's, uh, as he said, he's going for border regions. You can come here, visit at his site, uh, votecatarada.com. And uh, the one thing amazing here about uh, him is he's still a student and he's running for office. Yeah, thank you, Joe. I'm really grateful that I'm here um, at this uh, Tommy Rockets establishment here in Henderson. Um, I'm very grateful to be running for the border regions for District 6 that represents uh, areas like Henderson, East Las Vegas, and Southwest Las Vegas. I'm grateful for Joe and the work that he does out in the Filipino community, bringing our community together, and I hope to do the same on the border regions. So please vote this June 14th or beforehand with your mail-in ballot, and uh, we'll see you soon on the YouTube and TikTok. Yes. What is this? Hashtag Catarata Crew, right? Oh uh, yeah, Catarata yeah, Crew is the official. You can also put that too. Yeah, the Catarata <laughs> Crew is the official crew for um, our volunteer opportunities. You know, getting students and faculty involved. So, thanks so much.